Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. On this episode of Treasure Trader, Billy Jameson explores a medieval German dungeon. I will lead you to the torture chamber. Here we go. On a hunt to buy the infamous Nuremberg torture oh. tools. And you can't get out. Tracks down a rare 17th century suit of armor. If this suit of armor is authentic. It could be worth in tens of thousands of dollars. And is blindsided by a one-of-a-kind motorcycle. What's the fastest you've gone on that? Just a tick under 305 miles an hour. That could be worth a fortune. I live for the rush of chasing down pieces like this. Billy and his fiance Jessica are on their way to Nuremberg, Germany. I love history. I love going out and exploring and finding new things. I'm just like a little kid. I want to learn, 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 learn. This trip began with a phone call about a bizarre collection of medieval relics. Bill Jameson, can I help you? I get a call from a woman named Tooney in Rhode Island that's actually trying to sell a collection of 15th and 16th century torture devices. The collection includes hundreds of medieval torture tools used to extract a confession from thousands of poor souls. It could be worth over a million dollars. I've been talking with Tooney three or four times a week, sometimes for two, three hours at a time. Look at Billy. It's worth a tremendous amount of money. Uh -huh. She's been making me a little bit crazy on the phone. There's a reason you haven't sold it. And uh, I hate to say it, I think it's the price. Uh -huh. I have to say, it took a lot of time and yeah. resources to put it together. Yeah. I think she thinks it's worth around a million bucks. It sounds like she'll take somewhat less, but um, I need to do some homework. The collection itself is stored in a warehouse in the United States, but Billy's come to Germany to see where the tools were made. He wants to buy them, and if he does, it could be a dream come true. I really would like to open a really great museum one day. We have an interest in the dark and macabre, and it doesn't get much more macabre than 16th century torture equipment. Nuremberg's infamous medieval castles and dungeons are some of the darkest places on Earth. The town hall itself was built between 1332 and 1340. As much as I am a collector, it's fun to go to some of these places and understand where they came from. Yeah, we're very excited to see this. This dungeon was built over 600 years ago for prisoners waiting for a trial or an execution. I will lead you to the torture chamber. Here we go. The torture chamber was where prisoners confessed, guilty or not. Torture could be inflicted by many means. So these are thumb screws, which you just put your thumb inside, screw the bar down, and after a while, bones begin to break and you confess any crime, even one you've never committed. It really kind of gives me an idea. Just say you opened a torture museum, what do you make the museum look like? This is what dungeons from the medieval period look like. And history is dark. You can see here. I know that in the collection there's 20 or 30 or 40 crushing implements. They're heavy. Feeling better about this collection now that I've come and seen this place than I did before I got here. Once again, we got the price issue, which is another whole deal. Tuni Malici, the American in Rhode Island who owns the Nuremberg collection, wants seven figures. It had been at an auction company in New York, and they were looking for a million plus. And I want to come away with the torture collection, but I do not want to overpay for it. It's time to call Tuni and set up a meeting. Tuni, it's Billy. How you doing? Hi, Billy. What's up? Well, I'm in Nuremberg. You've definitely got my interest. Billy wants to move fast. Tooney could find another buyer. 
And that means a bidding war. Maybe I should just come down and see it and we should talk. Sounds good. Can't wait to see you. Okay, bye-bye. He's heard and seen enough. It's time to head home. And he's not in the door five minutes when he gets a lead about another new relic. British armor. This time, it's a suit of 17th century armor that belongs to a collector Billy's never heard of, Bob LaPan of Detroit, Michigan. And he's decided to sell it. I've never been offered a suit of armor before. And that's because most of them are locked up in museums, making them rare collectibles. If this one's the real deal, it's a one-of-a-kind find. If, if this suit of armor is, is authentic, it could be worth in tens of thousands of dollars, for sure. We're going to find out. It's time for a road trip. Billy and Jessica are off to Rhode Island to try and buy the torture tool collection. But on the way, they're stopping in Detroit to check out Bob LaPan's suit of armor. Bob! Yeah. Bill Jameson. Bill, glad to meet you. My fiance, yeah. Jessica Phillips. Wow. Come on, and I'll show you the armor. Cool. This is my pride and joy here. This is so cool. You know. Wow, eh? Yeah. It can Nasty. Be, yeah. Billy was excited about this armor until he saw it. Now he's suspicious. It may not be a complete suit. This suit is, is all one. The helmet is from another suit. What changes its value, as you can yeah, imagine. Right. If it was a complete set, it'd be worth yeah. a lot of money. How did you end up with this? You found this in England? Yes, uh, I was in London, which was for the International Motorcycle Show. You were over there with a the motorcycle? or you? Yeah, were the gyronaut, you know, the absolute world land speed record holder. Did someone say world record breaking motorcycle? Is that it? Is that the picture? Yeah, that's gyronaut. And at that time, I was the fastest uh, motorcycle rider in the world. I had no idea <laughs> that I was walking into this. This is I'm, I'm a motorcycle enthusiast. I've owned a lot of vintage bikes okay. in my day. And, but this is so cool. What's the fastest you've gone on that? October 21st, 1970, just a tick under 305 miles an hour. Wow, eh? Whatever happened to this amazing machine? I still have it. It's out uh, in my uh, heated garage. So much for a suit of armor. Billy may have just found a treasure a lot more valuable. Come on, and I'll show you the armor. Billy and cool. Jessica are in Detroit to check out a rare suit of armor and found out that it's a dud. The helmet is from another suit. Which changes its value, as you can imagine. Right. But they may have discovered an even bigger treasure. Oh, my God. Enter my world. This is, I've never seen inside one of these. Yeah, probably for most people more interesting to see it with the skin off. Yeah. In 1966, on Utah's Bonneville Salt Flats, Bob LaPan set a land speed record on two wheels of 395.362 kilometers an hour. His one of a kind bike could be worth its weight in gold. This is how you get in, and then. This is the actual riding position, like this, OK? This is exactly how you sit in a modern Formula One car, except I steer with the handlebars under my legs. Bob, this is the engine over here, eh? Well, actually, two engines. Were these the engines in there in 1966, for the record? These are the same engines that, that went 8,300 revs in top gear. I like artifacts or pieces, you know, that, that touch history. Bob, on this, can you tell me what's original and what's not? Every, everything you're looking at here is absolutely original. Even the fork that failed, where, where it fractured. So, so you had a crash. Was the crash at over, like, over 300? In 1970, Bob tried to break his own speed record. But this time, he lost control. In other words, I, I get a gust of wind from my right, and I'm on my side almost instantly. And of course, I ground off nine and a half inches of the main artery in the entire bicep. The doctor said no one ever had an arm like this that actually kept it. If something has a good story, I'm going to go after it. I know that you're considering selling this, right? Yes. Would your, would your intention be to put the engine in, yeah. pair, put the body yeah, back, and yeah. paint it up with all the decals of all the sponsors? Oh, oh yeah, we could, we could do that. I still have them. There isn't another motorcycle in the world that's like this. It's totally 
100% unique. It's beautiful. I live for the rush of chasing down pieces like this. It's really a buzz. Bob, this has been really great. Yeah. I think I got to go away and just do a little bit of research. Okay. And, and, okay. and perhaps maybe give you a call back and if it's okay. Sounds good and, to me. And I hope we meet yeah. again. I, it's been a pleasure. Billy has to leave a deal for Bob's rocket bike to another day. He's got a date with a torture tool collection in Rhode Island. It's hard to believe that we're going to see the stuff that's came out of the Nuremberg dungeons. Billy's invested a lot of time and money to confirm the quality of the collection. Now, he's determined to buy it. So now you're going to meet Tooney. Finally. Gorgeous place. Hey, Hi. Tooney! Come on in. To the dungeon we go. Most of the collection is stored in a warehouse but Tooney keeps the biggest, most valuable pieces right here in her basement. What's here for the collection is the shackles, the rack, the ladder. So you were hung from there and then rolled over on these, and usually you were disemboweled or branded, flayed, you know, all kinds of wonderful things. You know a lot about this, eh? After Unfortunately, being... yes. <laughs> Tooney in inherited all the stuff from a close friend of her family named Arnie Coward. Arnie Coward was a Norwegian freedom fighter who was tortured by the Nazis during World War II. After the war, he became fascinated with torture tools and collected over 300 pieces of the bloody Nuremberg collection. Arnie ran a museum of the macabre in Hawaii, and the material from Nuremberg was the center of his collection. I was born into this collection because my uh, mother was partners in business with Arnie since I was born. And when Arnie died, he left the collection to Tooney and her mother. I mean, and this thing weighs probably 700 pounds. I mean, it's solid. Oh my god. Yep. That's wild. And as you can see, there's a shackle for every size. You're going to want to wear this as jewelry. I you totally can pull it off, too. Torture couture. I'm just so used to having it around. It's, there's nothing really out there like it. I think it's worth a tremendous amount of money. Billy still needs to see the rest of the collection, but he's ready to make Tooney an offer and worried that she might turn him down. So we're going to have to meet her tomorrow morning to go look at the storage area with all the rest of the collection. Yeah. She did tell me she had another interested party. Oh, really? That offered her money, but I never know if it's true. And She's yeah. been asking for a million bucks for this collection for so long. I think I can maybe make a deal with her tomorrow. I, I don't want to lose this collection. Billy knows that cutting a deal with Tooney won't be easy. When you're buying something from somebody and they've owned it a long time, they become so attached to it that the whole process of letting it go becomes part of the deal. To make sure that she does, Billy's got a trick up his sleeve. He calls Mike is assistant in Toronto. How you doing, Mike? I really want you to come down here with the truck, OK? If you He's hoping down. that the arrival of a 10-ton moving truck will show Tooney that he won't take no for an answer. Yeah, no. OK, man. I look forward to seeing you, OK? Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. And now, it's time to make the deal. The next morning, Billy and Jessica meet Tooney at the warehouse to check out the rest of the collection. Wow. This was a stock. So your, your fingers. fingers would be stuck in there, and this would be around your neck. What does it look like I'm doing? A flute. If you were a bad musician. Look at oh, this. <laughs> That's absolutely incredible. This was basically a nobleman's shame mask. I love this piece. The thing I find interesting is, is I guess as a nobleman, it's got kind of a little metal mustache and goatee. But look at the artistry again. So, so you'd, be, you'd be sentenced to some kind of crime, and they could hear you coming. Hard to believe this stuff has lasted over 500 years. Dated 1530. I'd like to really look at the ideas and possibilities of opening a museum of the macabre, but a very elegant, classy kind of museum. So what do you think, honey? There's a lot of good pieces there. I think it's enough of a collection to do something with. So I'm going to go talk to her and see what I can do. OK, go. OK, honey. Good. Tuni has been told ridiculous prices of value by people that really did not know anything about the material. I turned them down because I didn't think that they were enough. I came down here to really try and buy it. I, I actually even went as far as to have a truck come down from Toronto 
and uh, to pick up the material. And haul my goodies away? I, I just, you know what, I'm here. I don't want to have to come back to do this. I just do it now. She maybe is so attached to it and has had it since she and grew up with it as a kid that she doesn't want to sell it. Billy Jameson's in Rhode Island, trying to buy a rare collection of medieval torture tools. I actually even went as far as to have a truck come down from Toronto. And haul my goodies away? But the owner's close personal connection could kill the deal. You know what, I'm here. I don't want to have to come back to do this. I just do it now. But I'm willing to pay her $225,000 for the collection. Say I go two twenty-five, dollars OK? We take the collection away. I'd like to do something with it that creates money down the road, maybe a traveling exhibit oh, or, or museum. I would give you a contract signed that would give you 17500 US a year should we exhibit it and start making money. So it'd be, you could get another 175000 yeah, I mean, that, that definitely makes it more palatable. I think we can do this. OK, let's do it. OK. When I make a deal, I like to move fast. And before they can even shake hands, Mike shows up with the moving truck. Got a call from Billy telling me he wanted to come down like pronto. It was like 17 hours, of, you know, since I picked up the truck to get down here. Typical day for Billy, yes. This deal is done. Now it's time to load up Billy's newest treasure. Two people go down, two people keep packing, and then they switch. Cool? Yeah. Yay. And break. Next. Like, oh, Did we get this one? Yep. I got all three? Yep. Dungeon Queen. <laughs> Be careful, there's iron You're spikes make, on the end. Make... You know, it's weird to think that torture instruments leaving would make you cry. But, you know, I had it was since I was a little girl. I think it's important that when you do a deal, both parties are happy. Ready to go. Hey. We got it done. I'm glad you we did it. pulled it off. The... I'm looking forward to seeing what happens to it in the future. Bye, dear. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> Bye. One deal down, one to go. Billy and Jessica make the long drive back to Detroit to try and buy Bob LePan's motorcycle. Billy has no idea what to offer Bob, so Jessica goes online to hunt down the value of vintage motorcycles. Then she calls an auction house. Bikes with a lot less history than Bob's were selling for well over $50,000. Billy's already on his way to meet Bob when Jessica gives him a call. Is Bob around? Hey, Bob. Hey, uh, here I am. Hey, Bob. Great to see you again. How are you doing? Not too bad. Yeah. And here we are, the gyronaut. You try and be fair at these things, and sometimes sellers and sometimes buyers don't know the value of the pieces like a speed record motorcycle. I've been calling all the auction companies and experts in the field, pricing what the value of this is. People keep throwing this price, I'm just throwing this out there, of 75 to 100,000. And the guy selling it wants to make sure you don't underpay for it. And I'm not just in this for money. Mm -hmm. I'm in this because this is a cool story yeah. and this is fun. You make an offer and you hope, I would like to offer you $100,000. I'd like to put it in R&M Auctions, the biggest motorcycle auction company in the world. I'd like to set this up to be the centerpiece of their auctions. Everything it sells for over 100,000, split with you. So in other words, you're gonna be guaranteed $100,000 from me. Then when it goes to auction in Vegas, anything it sells for over that, we split. Right. The only thing you'd have to do is restore it to what it was yeah. in right. 1966. Right. Right. I believe I'm making him a fair offer, but who knows what his expectations are. Billy Jameson is trying to make a deal for racing legend Bob LePan's one-of-a-kind motorcycle. I would like to offer you $100,000. Then when it goes to auction in Vegas, anything it sells for over that, we split. What's your thoughts on that? 
Well, I've been married to the same woman for 41 years, so obviously I have... You gotta talk to your wife. I understand totally. Yeah. It's such a cool story, and it's such a historical work of art. Right. And right. that, you know, almost took your life, you know? Oh, yeah, You yeah. must be so attached to this, but why don't you talk to her, and do you want to get back to me in a few yeah, days or something? Yeah, that would be great. And and thanks for the offer. Billy can't close the deal, and he has to leave Detroit empty-handed. But this road trip wasn't a failure. Mike got over the border with the torture collection we just bought, and it's arrived. We're bringing the collection down into the lower gallery. It's really the only place that it fits at the moment. So we're kind of spreading it out, organizing, categorizing, figuring out what we've got here. It's really exciting. So they get your head in there, and then you couldn't get out. <laughs> Holy fuck. Now that I have it spread out through my basement, I feel much more comfortable with what I paid for. It's Win some, lose some. That's treasure hunting. Billy lost out on the rare motorcycle, but scored big with the Nuremberg torture tools. I've found a lot of treasures in my life, and I'm hoping to find a lot more. But I remember the ones that got away more than I do the ones I got.